my agency and what we do, and uh, which is just in two lines really. We are about bringing brands to digital. Email marketing is a is a in that within that area there are some very specific do's and don'ts that you can do, that you can use, and uh, actually there's a huge amount of benefit that you can get because email marketing within the digital landscape has been is one of the most evolved uh, and you know used pieces by most marketers, and. Uh, if used better, you could probably double, triple, and quadruple what you're already doing in terms of results. So there are about, in all our experiences, we've been running, we, we, we have a huge amount of experience in email marketing. We've been, we would have, we'd be doing maybe a thousand odd campaigns a year. And these campaigns are run across various industries, whether it's, um, uh, you know, whether it is uh, banking, financial services, whether it is retail, whether it's loyalty programs. We run them across many of them. And uh, more and more of the different segments are also coming in. So within those campaigns, there are some discoveries. There are actually about seven points that I've listed out. And I want to just address it with you. And uh, maybe later we can just take it interactively. Yeah. The, the first and foremost, which we've been hearing across all of, all of these sessions, and it is exactly the same here. And this is something that is so simple to do and yet not done, measuring behavior. It's not just about measuring the end result, but it's about how you manage the behavior and the actions that will re lead to the end result. So measuring behavior in an email piece, what do you do? You measure clicks. You will measure whether he's seen it or not seen it. Whether he's seen your message or not seen the message. That's point one. But you also measure further subsequent actions related to that or non-action. That means if he's seen it or he's clicked on it and he's not done what you want, want, it, what you want, to, what you want the person to do, is also a behavior. And you need to be able to capture that data. It is there. So you need to start looking at it. We find that most people don't even have engines or don't even realize when they're sending out maybe a million messages out in a month. And to, you know, the most active customers, to the most valuable customers, and they still don't even know what they're doing. And they, the, the marketers have not realized this. But this is one of the first and primary pieces that you need to do. Measure behavior. Second is, uh, now, within the, within, the, within the construct of the message, there are really two or three things, which are the next one or two slides that I'll show you. One is that it is a principle of communication and advertising. What you show is what they buy. Whether it's a retail product or whether it's a piece of information you want to give them, what you show is what they buy. Now, you can choose, depending on your segmenting and everything else, on what you choose to show. And that's what the analytics that's sitting behind it is. That means you, you segment a customer profile, you say, you know, this is the kind of customer he's come from. Maybe he has a, you know, maybe he's, he's bought in this department. Maybe he's bought Salwar Kurta, uh, Salwar Kameez department, in the women's, or she's bought in the women's department. Or she's a, you know, a platinum uh, loyalty customer. Depending on whether she's bought jewelry, you use those pieces of information, which are static, which are at one level, the transaction behavior, or maybe the demographics that you might use. So you use those kind of behavior. And then you determine what you want to choose, what you, what you want to push that particular consumer towards, what you think that consumer can buy. So using that, your imagery inside your creative should be about that. And you should be able to do this on a million. That means you should be able to change it depending on whether you're talking to customer A, customer B, or customer C. You should all see different messages. And it's possible to do. So it is, it's, it's necessary to understand that what you show is what you buy, what they buy. So just going out and sending out one piece of communication which you've got in your print ad and you say it's so easy to send, let me just send it out to everybody. You're making the biggest mistake because you're losing a lot of opportunity by doing that. Next piece is, uh, it's got to be a continuing dialogue. Actually, you never make sales. Nobody sells. Nobody. Not even, uh, not even soap is sold without some kind of a relationship between the, the, the transaction, in that transaction, and then on a continuing basis. And even more so with, uh, uh, with all of these marketing when you're doing it on a brand. So a continuing dialogue is what? Like I said, it goes back to first measuring behavior. So when you're measuring behavior, you also act in a continuing way. So you might say that, you know, I want, I expect this consumer. So let's say that it's a welcome program that you're running. So you're, you're, you're getting a consumer on and you're saying that they've just signed up to a loyalty program, let's say, or they've just signed up to your product and then you want to introduce them immediately. So first of all, it should be instant. You should be able to go back to them instantly uh, with the communication where they've, done something which you wanted to do, which is probably bought your product, and you're going back and tell them, thanks so much for buying my product, this is what it is, this is what you can expect, and so on, and give them the full glory. 
depending on how they react to it, probably in that communication you need nothing more than to inform them. But you might tell them, okay, why don't you take a demo? Or why don't you act now? And give them options like that. Now when you do, depending on, the depending on what they do in their behavior is what you should send your subsequent communication. And you should. You should send com subsequent communication because it's expected for them. They want to see that. The more you talk to a consumer, the more you do business, the more you talk, talk to them, the more business you do. And this is true. This is what advertising is about, this is what communication is about, this is what sales is about. So you need to have repeat communication, but you need to do it intelligently because you're going and talking one-on-one -on -one with a person and you need to have done it with history of your communication before. So it's got to be a continuing communication and it's got to be a dialogue. So here, what that person's doing in their implicit and explicit behavior, whether they act or not act, that's the next piece. Uh, frequency is very critical. That means you've got to be able to talk to these guys uh, you know, over a, with a certain level of intensity over a period of, or over a short period. So a classic one we found is 45 to 60 days. 45 to 60 days is what you should run a basic campaign around. And within those 45 to 60 days, you need to run three to four, five exposures at least. That means every seven to nine days. I keep getting asked this question by all marketers saying, you know, and there are two kinds of questions that will come to me. You know, there's, a, there's one marketer who will say, you know, we don't send too much communication with the consumer because, you know, I think it's not right, it might land up as spam and so on and so forth. But, uh, and, and then there's the other kind who also does too much of it. He says, I don't care, I just keep dumping uh, communication to them, you know, emails to them or messages to them of all kinds. The answer here is really that as long as you're intelligent and relevant, you can do it every second of the day if you need to. That's, that's an extreme. But actually speaking, you can. So as you need to be relevant and therefore you need to go uh, you know, often. Now on campaigns, we found three to five times is exactly, by, it's a quantifiable number. That means if I, the kind of response that I get with one message going out, that means if I've got a hundred people who've come back to me. Let me give you an example. There was a, there was a campaign that we ran for a, for a bank and uh, during that campaign period of about, uh, about 45 odd days, we, did, we generated about 150 odd crore of new deposits, purely through an online e-marketing exercise like, the, like I'm talking to you about. It was intelligently done, it was done over a little under a million customers, and it was done segmented and so on. So uh, within that, uh, what we found was that when you sent out the first piece of, we, we analyzed a lot of those things, clicks and things like that, and you do this as you go along with the program. So the first communication that went out and the responses that came out of the people who came out of this first communication got would actually accounted for only 25 crore out of this whole 150 crore. So the rest of the money came in later. So 25 went on to about 70 by the third communication. And from the third to the fifth is the other 70. So this much money you could have left on the table by now. And this was done in an intelligent way. That means you continue the dialogue, you handle uh, you know, you, you make sure that you're understanding what they're saying by their behavior and you respond and take it. So that's, that's the uh, next piece. So uh, the other bit is buying is not a straight path. Like we're seeing, whether it's search, whether it's anywhere else, it's all talking about the same consumer. Which means that it's not just because you tell the guy to buy and you only measure that last bit. There is a lot that the consumer is going through. There's a search and evaluation and everything else. Now similarly, with, with, in an email, you'll find those things taking place. That means you will see we, again, in, 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 in another campaign that we did, we found that uh, only 25% of the business that we generated came out of that click of transact now, buy now, fill this form and get your, and that fulfillment was online. Only 25%. 75%, out of the other 75%, another 18 to 20% came from people who just went back to the main corporate site. They clicked on the site, went back to the corporate site, and wanted to know more. That means it's a relationship with a, the, the, a customer relationship where, where he's been a client for, you know, what, one year, two years, been tenured like that, and still they go back and check more about it. So it's just a way of navigating. It doesn't mean that they're trying to know more about it, but they, you start discovering that. Then there are demos. There were pieces that they still didn't know about the product. They needed to know more features. There were clicks there. There would have been, you know, another 10, 15 percent that happened. So this is, so it's not just a straight path, you need to open these up. And then based on what they click, you have to go back with further communication. And that's the other thing. So it's never a straight path, you need to be able to measure and be able to act on it. This is, this is absolutely the other thing, which is you have to integrate it with the other areas. You can't just send out a mail message without doing the rest of it, which is 
you should allow him to click, you should allow him to share it, you should allow him to, uh, you know, click through and then therefore what, what does he click through to? Is it a, is it a landing page and the landing page has to be relevant? You can't just land him up in, in some, you know, uh, place where you, you're talking to him about get more as a demo and then you land him up on a home page of your site where he has to, you know, search again for the demo, things like that. So it's got to be relevant. Um, so it has to cover all of these areas, which is the digital experience, the social, the ads and the search. And uh, lastly, the most important thing, you have to make sure it gets delivered. This is another basic problem that's there. That means the engines that run, and you don't know how these, exactly as they were talking about Google in the previous uh, session, you know, saying that we don't realize that a lot of the messages that you're sending out are not getting delivered. And not getting delivered for a variety of reasons. Okay, so even if I take away, so what are the variety of reasons? One is, uh, the basic reason are also your, your engine. That means how the IP is, configured, is it whitelisted, is it not, does the engine, is the engine capable of sending out mails in this form with this uh, personalization and so on, and that itself, you need to whitelist, you need to keep your relationships with the ISPs at a basic level, uh, right, so that is one part. The next part is the content itself, the messaging, what's your subject line, what's inside the, how have you tested it for different browsers, and so on and so forth, yeah, so these are some of the important bits, so you need to make sure that it, it does get delivered. And uh, you have to, for that, you have to really make sure that you go to an engine which is uh, extremely good. So these are the seven points really that, uh, these are, these, this, is, this is it, if you cover these things and build your practice on it, uh, uh, I mean you really can double, triple revenues out of the same campaigns, the same customer bases that you have right now.